We're Adam and Tom from Atomic Rocket Studios. We, we are. And we're going to uh, we're going to try this live broadcasting thing, and we're going to do our first uh, gameplay here, right? Yeah. And it is Mouse Guard Swords and Strongholds. So if you're not familiar with Mouse Guard, Mouse Guard is an amazing comic book um, written and illustrated by David Peterson. Such as this. Mouse Guard, Legends of the Guard. And uh, one of the first major published print copies of Mouse Fall 1152, which is a piece of a multiple book series. And all the collections are are um, based on seasons, correct? Yes. Uh, after this one is Fall, of course. And uh, I really love the art in this, which is one of the first things that attracted me to this. And also, I'm a huge fan of like... Um, uh, Secret of Nim. Yes. And this is what, like, I grew up on is, like, stories based on small creatures and animals, and this just really struck a chord with me. Uh, and, of course, I mean, just beautiful artwork. Yep. I think these books story. have cool maps, too. Oh, yeah. For example. Definitely. So there's this whole mouse guard world. It's pretty wonderful. Um... It does expand, so it has seasons, and then there is some um, some flashback into the history of this world, which is the Legend of the Black Axe. Also very good. I've not been able to read that in its entirety, but it is, again, extended beautiful story, artwork. Um, this was a, a piece that I got a couple years ago for Free Comic Book Day. Um, again, very, very, very great series. By David Peterson. So tell everybody what prompted you to to get this. How did you how did you obtain this game? So Mouse Guard Swords and Stronghold started out as a Kickstarter. Um, I actually funded it. Oh gosh, is when I first moved around in this area. So it was about a year and a half ago. Now did David Peterson himself? Is he, was, he the one who uh, started the Kickstarter? He or? was very heavily involved. Um, it was inspired by a game that's actually um, within the world, the story world. Um, so it's inspired by this, this game that like my, or mouse guard members would play in, in pubs and stuff. Mm -hmm. So, uh, they, they started this, uh, fund to get the game started. Uh, lots of people were involved. They had this play tested like crazy at different cons and, um, uh, um, what's it? He had a couple other writers who were very... Uh, Patrick Rothfuss was also involved with some of the play testing and some of the con stuff of like live game play and things like that. So I got really, really interested and saw that there was a Kickstarter and uh, I think I funded it within the first like 10 days that it started. So seeing it uh, get funded was really exciting. It was a long wait to uh, see the game in action and get it in my house. Were there a couple different versions of the game? There were. I got the basic version. And what it comes with is still pretty impressive. So it's a heavy print instruction manual. And it's only just a, you know, a, a bifold. Uh, my version comes with uh, nice stock cards. So equivalent to what you would get for, you know, like gameplay cards. Um, yeah. Like poker cards or whatever. And as you can see, um, David Peterson's work on the cards as well as the board my version comes with pawns that are plastic um, but what i like about them is that they are um, really rugged like they're carved out of wood which is great um, and has a nice rustic feel to them and it comes with two sets it's a two-player game and this is the part that really impressed me is that even with the basic version, you don't just get some cardboard board. You actually get a pine stain finished board. So you get an actual real wood board. And that's super intricate. No, it's not really um, complicated or, or uh, complex or whatever you want to call it. Um, there's no like fancy etching or anything like that. It is engraved for each of the grid lines. But what's nice is that it really kind of gives you that feel of this is something that I could see 
if you're in the world of Mouse Guard, if you're a soldier, that this is something that you could keep in your like satchel. And you would just kind of is kind of a thing that you bring with you, like your canteen or whatever. It travels well. Right. Like, you know, back in the day in the Civil War, I'm sure that there were games that they just carried with them so they could entertain themselves when things weren't crazy. Um, and I kind of had the same feeling with this. All right. So we should let everybody know that um, you've obviously played this before. I have not. And you gave me a brief overview of the instructions, but I wasn't listening. So this <laughs> this experience is going to be as if I, I really don't know how to play the game. So and for the sake of everyone listening, too, we should we'll, we'll definitely walk through the gameplay and the basic rules. Yeah. Um, so let's, uh, let's start with the basics. So the objective is to, uh, you know, one player to win, you're either going to build a stronghold in either one of the opposing corners. So for me to win, I want to put two strongholds in the opposite corner on Adam's side. And for Adam, of course, to win, he would want to place strongholds on my side. Uh, the other objective is to capture each person's pawn. And each person's pawn can be captured basically by using a, a particular move to push them off of the board. Okay. So that's the basics of it. Um, to set up, we want to have the deck shuffled, which I've already done. Uh, we want to each draw three cards. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to pick up three cards. And you, you don't share these. So I've played this, but I've played it with my kids. And to simplify things, I've only used the basic rules. And we always had cards face up. Uh, of course, we don't have to do that in this case. Um, I'm okay with basic rules. All right. Do you want to do the, do you want to do the same style? We can do face up so we can... Yeah, let's, just go let's do that so that everybody can see what cards we are actually holding. All right, perfect. So I'm going to lay mine down just so we, we can have full... Uh, exposure here um, so to simplify things the way at least I, I've understood the instructions and the way I've played with my kids is uh, you have a swords card which is basically your extended move slash attack move your stronghold which is a defensive or potentially your your winning move and then you have a diplomacy card which can be used to uh, counteract somebody's stronghold okay uh, to set up, you each get four pawns. I'll, I'll, I'll play the, the gray pawns. Uh, you can use the first two grids on your side, and they get placed at the intersections. And you can place them in any configuration within your two, your, your two rows. So I'm just going to go all wacky here and have no real logic to my setup. <laughs> Uh, and you can see that this the board looks really nice, and the plastic pieces don't really look or even really feel plastic. Uh, the more advanced boards, they do have a cherry wood, really beautiful board that comes with pewter figures, which is really, really nice looking. I did not go with that. <laughs> that, was, that was a few notches higher in my, my Kickstarter funding that I was willing to, to, to drop. But um, for this kit, it was only... 40 bucks, which for a Kickstarter for a brand new board game is it's right on par, even on the lower side. That's not bad at all. <clears throat> so a basic game takes anywhere between, I think it's 20 to 40 minutes. Okay. Um, so it really depends on the skill of each opponent. Uh, I think if you're both pretty equally matched, you could end up being at a, more of a stalemate. Well, since I have no skill, it's probably going to be on the, the shorter <laughs> side. Uh, the last person I played was four. And I, I steamrolled him, but that doesn't really say much. Again, it was is a four year old. <laughs> okay, so who who moves for, first in this game? Black moves first. Okay, so again, I can move one space, one intersection in any direction. Yes. So unlike checkers. I can move backwards in a defensive posture if need be. Right. You can move okay. in a straight line any direction unless it's off the board. Each turn you do have to move, but you are not required to use a card. Okay. So I've moved my piece. 
And I would imagine it would be slow going at first until you actually get in a position right, like where you'll want to use some of your cards. You, you get to an actual confrontation point. Already I feel like I'm being set up. You're only moving <laughs> one piece. Well, I'm I'm pretty out of practice when it comes to um let's go with the strategy games like chess. Um let's see. So I'm going to tell you right now, I am not using any sort of solid strategy. I have no, like, maneuvers, per se. Uh, I'm just, I'm winging it, man. I'm winging it. Okay. So at this point in time, just to interject some variation into this game, if I were to use my sword card right now, what I could do is I could, the sword card goes in an L shape. Kind of like, um, which chess piece would that be equivalent to? Uh, the, the, knight. the knight, yes. So you could go up one space, and then you could either move to the right or the left. So if I move to the left, I knock your guy over one grid, correct? Yes. Now, ideally, what I want to do is I want to use that maneuver when his mouse is closest to the edge so that I can knock that piece completely off the board, in essence, capturing the mouse. Correct. Correct. And since I've used this card, it gets discarded, and I draw a new card. Perfect. Okay. Uh, now, let's see. Um, I'm going to go... I'm gonna I'm gonna use I'm gonna use a card as well. I'm gonna use my sword card as well, uh, but I'm gonna have a different. I'm gonna use a different approach. Um, I'm gonna push you. But that's about all I'm gonna do. I'm gonna pull another one. So could I use the sword card where there are no mice? I believe so. So let's clarify. Just on to the get sword card. just to get an extra maneuver. We're we're getting more comfortable in the game, so let's elaborate a little. Um, the sword card allows you to move your mouse uh, one intersection in any direction and then a second move left, right, back, or forward. So you could essentially go in a straight line, two moves. Uh, this is in addition to your normal move. So uh, if your mouse pawn encounters another pawn on either leg of the sword move, it pushes that pawn back in the same direction. And then if it falls off the board, it's captured. So you could essentially move uh, two moves in a straight move in, in a straight, straight line, line and not have to encounter another mouse. Got it. Okay. All right. Now you right now are in a position to start moving towards a stronghold, which is what you want. It's a fair statement. So I have not adequately defended this space. <laughs> of course, there's nothing that's preventing me from moving backwards at this point in time. That's I've just true. chosen you, not to do so. You, you are you are you are pushing forward. Um, so now, you my intention is definitely uh pretty straightforward but there's a there's a default to that so i'm going to move and then i'm going to use my stronghold card of okay. course because now i'm now in the position to do so um and now you're right i have captured one of your corners and put up a stronghold uh however i am now essentially uh four against three right and uh, you're pushing forward. Oh, I gotta get another card. So, oh, all right. just to let everybody know that's watching, you can use your stronghold card at any point in time on the board. 
Um, and I will I will use an example here. So I'm going to play one of my stronghold cards. And by playing this, I'm no longer on the intersection, correct? I am moving mm -hmm. halfway in between. So, in essence, you... Into the square, like my... Oh, into the square. Actually, into the square. So at this point in time, can I move that mouse again? No. Uh, before you move again, you need to use a move to exit the... The stronghold. The stronghold. This is a good point to elaborate. To come out of a stronghold on your turn, place your mouse pawn on an adjoining intersection and make a regular move with that pawn. So you can stay safe in that stronghold. For as only... long as you want. Right. And I can't, I can't, so here's what I can't do now. I can't move on any of the adjacent lines around your, your stronghold. Okay. And I can't draw you out at least not without a diplomacy card and i can't use the sword card against you okay um now you can't move of course until you decide to use up a turn to get that mouse uh, pawn out correct everything's coming to light now <laughs> yes all right now i feel speaking on a strategy that uh Albeit a, a very good explanation of the stronghold card, that you have put me in a good place uh, because I have one corner defended for now. And uh, your other guy has made it so I'm a little defended. Even though I'm not completely over defending that corner, uh, it, it's made us all kind of awkward around that location. So if I were to basically box you in, would you be able to push my mouse just on a regular move, or would you need to use a sword card? I believe you have to use a sword card. So, uh, if you choose not to use a sword card, your mouse can only go in one direction at this point in time, and that would be back. Uh, yeah. So, you cannot move a pawn because it is trapped. You cannot use that pawn this turn. So, yeah, if, if you have me trapped, I can't move. Um, you may not push any with normal movement. There we go. You may not push with normal movement. Only sword cards and strongholds can push another pawn. So if I were to set up a stronghold, I could, I could push the other to my side of the way on the adjacent, uh, lines. Okay. So that's interesting to know. Um, what I would consider is... I will actually use a diplomacy card. Okay. Uh, because I can use it on your stronghold or I can use it to swap places. And what do you nearest... mean by swap places? So I can now swap places with the nearest pawn. And if I'm equally distanced from two different pawns or more, I can choose the one that I would like to swap places with. Okay. So, since you're blocking me. Oops. I'm going to go ahead and swap places with you. Okay. And draw another card. Now, when you're playing somebody for the first time who, who were walking through this together um, to give you the, the instructions, I am, of course, at an advantage <laughs> because I have at least some practical use of, of the game. Now, the cards that I have mm -hmm. right now, I have two stronghold cards and a diplomacy card. And for what I am trying to do, these cards are not working well for me. And you had mentioned that I can swap out all three cards and draw new three new cards at any point in time. Is uh, that correct? I know you can swap out if you have one of each type of card. Okay. You can rescue a pawn. Let's see. <clears throat> you can push. You can. You must take full. You must make the full sword move. Push enemies into their own strongholds and capture them. Interesting. The stronghold may not be pushed by a sword. Strongholds block movement by enemy and friendly mice. You do not play a card when you exit a stronghold. So what I'm hearing from you is that's not true. It does, does not sound like... It does. It sounds like the only time you discard all of your cards is... Um, so you gave when, me some you want to rescue. bad advice on the pre-walkthrough, and that's okay. So I'll go ahead... I'm going to get my mouse out of this stronghold by moving him to that intersection. 
All right. That's a fair move, sir. All right. I'm going to use... I want to uh, expedite, expedite my, my movement here. I'm going to use my sword card. And I'm going to move him two spaces. And then you'll draw a new card. Right. It's important to remember that. Ooh, lovely. So really, at this point, since I do not have a sword card, it puts me at a little bit of a disadvantage. Right. Um, however, I do see some other opportunities. But I'm curious to see if you'll come to the same conclusion. As am I. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I am once again, I'm going to try and expedite because I got lucky. I got another sword card. I'm going to use it. And I'm going to go and an L move and draw another card. And once again, I got lucky. I got another, another sword, sword card. card. No. I have to, I, now I'm in a little bit of a predicament. You're staying there. I can't push you without a sword card. Right. But I have to complete the sword move. So, so I can now. Since you cannot go in that L pattern and push me off the board, you would need to. Well, I can push you. So here's what will end up happening is ideally I'd like to, you know, move there and then for the next move position myself for the uh, stronghold right but if I'm going to push you which I'm gonna go ahead and do anyway you take my guy off the board but now I'm out of the advantage of being able to set up my stronghold without doing anything extra so at what point in time can I rescue my mouse now can I put him back on the board so if you discarded and used one of your diplomacy or I'm sorry your stronghold cards Mm -hmm. If you picked up a sword card, which reminds me, I should. <laughs> and another sword card. <laughs> um, if you discard one of your stronghold cards and pick up a sword card, you can now discard all three cards and rescue one of your captured pawns. So I would have to dis discard the stronghold card first. Right, so use it on one of your, your, your pawns. Okay, so I could... Place him in a stronghold. And then if I draw a sword card, which I did not, I would have been able to I them all. <laughs> discard all three of my cards and bring my player back onto the board. Correct. Okay. So, um, now I don't have a whole lot going on for me now because I can move my guy back. But it doesn't do me a lot of good because I don't have a, a I don't have a stronghold card. Correct. So until then, my only other option is to try and capture the remainders, uh, remaining pawns. Okay. Um, one of yours is in a stronghold. Uh, I can either pull him out with a diplomacy card, or I can move for one of your other free pawns and try and capture them. Okay. Um, so that's a tough call. I don't know how many sword cards are left so I will uh, I will move him not that it matters where I go and I'll use a diplomacy card and I'll draw this guy out and I'll draw a new card perfect All right. So since I have the ability to do it, I'm going to use my stronghold card. Okay. Uh, so now I can move to this corner. I'm going to discard my stronghold card and capture the last corner. And you have won the game, game at this point. So, yeah, and of course, if, if luck were slightly different, um, you could have either rescued your pawn. Uh, what I was mentioning before is when I came to this point, if you would have used one of your stronghold cards, I then would have to use a diplomacy card to even draw you out and then to capture it. You would have then occupied that 
So there's a lot of strategy in this game, but it's pretty easy to pick up, pretty easy to learn. I'm not the quickest right. <laughs> it's to pick up well, board games, and I found this pretty easy. So yeah, yeah this is, is a lot of fun. I think it's really quick pickup. Um, I mean, if you're just going over to a friend's house and, and you want to, to do something while you chat and hang out, I think it's a great casual way to do it. Now, do you know if this is available at retailers? Uh, I have started seeing posts about it being in, in some stores. Um, I, they have moved beyond the, the Kickstarter fulfillment, so I, I believe they're getting out to actual stores. Um, I can't remember. I so I did the Kickstarter, so I have I am right. going to be straightforward honest. I don't know exactly where you'll Well, play. if you're interested in trying it out yourself, it is Mouse Guard, Swords and Strongholds. Go ahead and type that into the old Googler and uh check it out. Perfect. Alright. Thanks, Tom. Alright. See you later.